Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Astronomers studying the atmosphere of Venus are facing a new mystery. The Venusian winds have been steadily accelerating for the last six years. Scientists monitoring the Venus Express orbiter since 2006 noted the stunning increase of the already superfast winds from 186 miles per hour to 249 miles per hour. The astronomers acknowledge they do not understand why this enormous variation in wind speed occurred. What is it about the Venusian atmosphere that mainstream astronomers find so puzzling? According to the Space Research Institute in Moscow, the average cloud top wind speed on the planet, that's Venus, has risen from 186 miles per hour in 2006 to 249 miles per hour in 2012. That's a rise of more than 33%, and scientists aren't sure why it's happening. The European Space Agency said there was currently no explanation for the super high winds which were picked up by its Venus Express probe. This is, and here's a direct quote, this is an enormous increase in the already high wind speeds known in the atmosphere. Such a large variation has never before been observed on Venus, and we do not yet understand why this occurred, said Igor Katuntsev from the Space Research Institute and lead author of the Russian-led paper to be published in the journal Icarus. The problem for astronomers is that they are missing the most powerful energy source in the universe, and that's electrical power, electrical energy. With our own Earth, we have a connection to the Sun, and the Sun-Earth electrical connection has to penetrate the Earth's magnetosphere before connecting with the ionosphere and driving the high-speed winds in our stratosphere. Venus has a more direct electrical connection to the Sun, mistakenly called giant magnetic flux ropes. But magnetic fields in space plasma require electric currents to be flowing in the plasma, and electric currents flow in a circuit. So, as Hans Alfein said, to understand what is going on, we must trace the circuit. But you'll see no mention of circuits or electricity flowing in space in any textbook on astronomy. The theory that external electrical energy may drive the Venusian atmosphere is affirmed by the mysterious vortices at the north and south poles of Venus. A few years ago, it was discovered that Venus has twin vortexes at the pole and that it was hot at the poles. Now this is a direct indication that twin filament Birkeland currents impinge on the poles of Venus and also heat the atmosphere with the electrical energy deposited there. Professor Fred Taylor of the University of Oxford's Atmospheric, Oceanic and Planetary Physics Department wrote about the Venusian polar vortex and he said, the absence of viable theories which can be tested, or in this case any theory at all, leaves us uncomfortably in doubt as to our basic ability to understand even gross features of planetary atmospheric circulations. Based on that discovery of the Venusian hot pole, I also predicted the hot winter pole on Saturn, based on the observation that the polar vortex on Venus is the hottest spot in the planet's upper atmosphere. And the heating is electrical. It's part of the electrical energy that flows between the Sun and the galaxy. This is a very simple explanation, and it also fits with the high-speed winds because they can be explained in terms of the simplest electric motor known called the Faraday disk motor. The Faraday disk motor is the simplest kind of electric motor you can have. All it requires is a magnetic field and a disk conductor or even a sphere if you like, something that's symmetrical, and pass a current in at the poles of that object and out at the equator and it will cause that object to rotate. It's the same kind of principle used in a lot of power meters, which measure the electric current flowing into your house. There's a magnetic field impressed across an aluminium disc, and the aluminium disc rotates in response to the amount of current that's flowing. There's an allied electrical phenomenon explained only by the electric universe model of planetary gravity and mass, and that is that scientists have recently detected a sudden and dramatic slowdown in the rotation of Venus. Data from the European Space Agency's Venus Express orbiter indicates the cloud-covered world is now taking six and a half minutes longer to complete a full rotation than it did 16 years ago when NASA's Magellan orbiter measured its spin rate. 
It found surface features were up to 20 kilometres from where they should be, based on the rotational data collected through surface radar mapping by both Magellan and the Soviet Union Venera probes. The European Space Agency says the Venus Express data also agrees with the most recent long-duration radar measurements from Earth. Now, in the Electric Universe model, the deposition or the extraction of charge from a planetary body will change its mass and therefore its rotation rate. This has all been observed on Earth in small changes called glitches in the Earth's rotation when we suffer a blast of uh, charged particles from the Sun. Mars also has shown glitches in its rotation as associated with its huge dust storms. Now, both the dust storms and the rotation could be due to the same effect, that is, the exchange of charge with the Earth, because these storms generally occur when Mars is in opposition. So here we have one simple explanation that could solve all of these mysteries in one stroke. But it requires a complete change in thinking on the part of astronomers. In the electric universe, weather and atmospheric phenomena on all planets are inextricably linked to the heliospheric electrical circuitry. You would expect, if there's an electrical connection between the planets and the sun, that you would be seeing strange effects on all of the planets. And the innermost ones, Venus, Earth and Mars, have all recently been headlined with strange effects. The rotation of Mars, the rotation of Venus, the high-speed winds on Venus and the extreme weather on the Earth. And of course, when you come to the weather on the Earth, there is absolutely no accounting for electrical energy input into our weather systems. And yet lightning, tornadoes, typhoons, all of the high-speed wind effects and so on can be driven electrically. Under these circumstances, climate change is inevitable, but it has nothing to do with us. It's the effect of the energy changes within the solar system. The very fact that the sun has had a strange sunspot cycle recently, and that is our main bellwether, if you like, our indicator that electrical effects are taking place in the solar system that are unusual, the very fact that has tied in at this time as well is strong evidence in favour of this electrical explanation. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.